this is a lecture that I'm actually really looking forward to. Mr. Flare Guy has, uh, like, I'll post a picture of it. He's got this very nice, well-detailed timeline of, like, Rants and Alisoff Games translations. Mm -hmm. So he's going to give us a nice history lesson well, it's, in all it's, this. It's more, it's less of a, a lecture and more like an open discussion. All right. Mm -hmm. with, with some structure based off of this timeline. And I'm here to try and maybe assist in that, too. Yeah. So I'm definitely the least educated out of all of you when it comes to this particular subject. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to hearing the full story because, like, I've heard bits and pieces about uh, some of the, the nightmare scenarios. Yeah. In 2009, uh, Takaju, on impulse, decided to translate... He wanted to translate an Eros that had a bit more gameplay and meat to it. And arbitrarily, he decided to translate Sengoku Rants, the seventh game in the series. He had no prior knowledge on the series and didn't really care for any continuity or terminology or any of that. So there were a lot of general uh, hiccups in the translation. Mm -hmm. And there were really no like established terms anyway at that point in time. Yeah, because like this was, as far as I can tell, from my extensive research, uh, the first real big exposure that the Rain series had to the West. Yeah, unless yeah. there's some like secret forum out there that was made in like 2007. Also, I think you should clarify like Rants has been going on for like 30 years. When did the first one come out? It was like 89. 89, 89 yeah. with, unless you count Little Princess, in that case, it came out in like 87, I believe. The first Rants game yeah. was 89. Yeah. Yeah, so like, that was 20 years of it being like a thing in Japan, but never having any translations mm -hmm. yeah which which is not that uncommon especially like this back in history like there's not many there are many like games like that were translated over at this point yeah. in time and like eros as a whole is a very niche thing that it doesn't have the it doesn't have the same pool of i'm translating shin megami tensei if i'm translating mother three especially over here in the west yeah no, it it takes a special type of person to be like, I'm going to translate this Eros, and it's going to appeal to a very small number of people. There's no glory in this. <laughs> Only love. <laughs> so arbitrarily, in 2009, Takajun releases a fan translation of Sengoku Rants, and there are several translation errors and quite a few bugs included. Although, despite that, it does kind of explode, especially at, like, around 2010, 2011. Yeah. Because um, that's when I got into it. Yeah. The series, like, this was a big, like, exposure point to the series. And a lot of people took notice of the fact that in the bottom right corner, there's a little icon that says Rants 7. <laughs> and, like, I'm not sure Takaju noticed this. Otherwise, he would have, like, fact-checked anything. <laughs> but 7 means there's there's a six there's a five there's a four there's a 4.1 there's a 4.2 there's, there's some that aren't eight that some that aren't uh, numbered and like people started to get curious and they also found out not only was there like stuff before this there was stuff after this this series is still going on and naturally a lot of people got curious as to what would happen next uh during this time a uh, few people on 4chan would basically say show that they would be translating the later games in the series. But before we get into that, I do want to go over some of the things with the Takajun translation. Coming coming up, uh, at, the, at the time this video is uploaded, probably, because it's going to be it's going to be uh, September 12th or later then. Surely, surely it'll be released by then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, since there is an official release coming up, I should take note of what's probably and definitely going to be changed. There's some immediate mistranslations with the Takajun translation. Uh, Lizas Le is spelled with a U instead of an A. And that's that's some minor shit right there. One of the more uh, funny, funny haha -ha translation things that I always come back to is what they did with the name of... Uh, Ragnarok Arc Super Gandhi, and by extension, Magic the Gandhi. <laughs> and that was to spell it with a... Instead of a DH, they, he spelled it with a J. So we have Magic the Ganji, which I've always memed into Magic the Ganja. <laughs> like, oh, Zeth sent it 
maybe Zeth send over Ganji. Zeth sent the good Kush. <laughs> yeah, and, that's uh, pretty, and especially when that's the only thing you know about Zeth, and they've got a person named that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a wacky game. Maybe, maybe there is a there is a weed man over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is an entire nation run by like clay pots. Like that is that is believable. Yeah, it's also crazy that for a lot of uh, for a lot of fans of the Rant series, their first exposure to the Handy King was just a guy. It was a and, fake. Yeah, <laughs> a fraud. Additionally, a lot of the generic dialogue and names and some of the stuff in Free for All were just left untranslated. Though I'm mm -hmm. not sure if that's intentional or if he just screwed up programming it. Because there's also a glaring glitch in the free-for-all mode of the game where the game can hang up when it's trying to generate generics because it's screwing up generating their names. This problem is fixed in the uh, Darkness Hero Rants mod because uh, Tofu Guy fixed up the name generation and stuff there. But uh, the first time I launched free-for-all mode, I just soft-locked the game. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck did I just unlock? The translation doesn't exactly match with the later translations of the series, and there's just a lot of minor holes here and there. But it was enough to just get a huge, like, fall, like a bit of a cult following going on. Yeah, I mean, especially as the core of it came from Zinga Rants, came from the gameplay, not exactly like the writing of the characters yet. Yeah. Granted, that, like, focus on the gameplay would ultimately be what shifts people's opinions on the series yeah <laughs> and that's a, that's an entire discussion for itself we wouldn't get much news on the series for a while in 2010 uh we got a translation of the not quite a rants game but it plays close enough to some goku that got a lot of people interested mm -hmm. or at least a bit not as interested but still interested with yeah. Dai Bancho, Big Bang Age. Uh, this yeah. was done by a different translation group and is a much more complete translation of its game. I don't speak Japanese, so I can't verify if everything they did was like up to code. I did take note that uh, the name generation for the non-human units would get a bit uh, referency. I distinctly remember going to the beach and doing the battle where we fight a bunch of animals and seeing Ridley pop up as all like, is, this, is, that, is that genuine? I never saw that. That's, that's awesome. I see, Rid I see Ridley pop up and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, this is this is funny. But that being said, like, Alisoff has a lot of references in their games, so... Yeah, but would they just make gen a generic character that you may encounter multiple times just, this is Ridley? No, that's Ridley over there. After this, in 2011, we got machine translations of Rants 1, the Quest for Hikari, and Rants 02, both of which did not really get much attention at all because uh, Rants 1 is an adventure game. From it's a the... 80s slash like late 80s adventure game on top of that. So it's a mess. Yeah. It's a, it's a mess. And... But it is, it is really short though. It's really short, but like also not worth look, spending time looking into it. Uh, one of the things I, one of the few memories I have with Rants One, doesn't come from playing the game itself. It comes from like like looking up stuff about the series. One of the things that would come up would be a review of Rants One by someone who clearly is not having any of this uh, H game stuff. <laughs> They're, they're, they're very much like uh, Rant's bad man. <laughs> Rant's the bad rape man. When that's, that's kind of the the joke at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was kind of meant to be a parody of like the typical H pro tag. Yeah. Where he's just completely selfish. And that joke was lost. Partially because the translation of the game isn't good at all. <laughs> yeah. But at the time, if you wanted to experience the origins of the series... You had these two translations, and while they weren't perfect by any means, and they did have plenty of errors, they did let you see more content, and that was nice to find. In 2012, uh, a user on 4chan's VEG Rants slash Alsoft General released a translation of Rants 3, The Fall of Lee's Ass. This is the first game in the series that actually had some gameplay and actually started to generate some excitement for the series but also 
being the first one that was actually worth playing started to clue in a lot of people to not every game in the series is going to play like Sengoku. Rants 3 at least has a lot of big story developments with the introduction of the demons and also Hellman. Yeah. The two, the two antagonists, really. <laughs> <laughs> this game is also kind of where, like, the more coined terms um, start, like, showing up. Because in 3 is where you get stuff like, you know, Demon King, um, like, Fiends Chaos. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, because 1 and 2 doesn't, like, aside from also being, man, like, machine translated, they don't really have too many relevant terms yeah. that show up, like, throughout the series. You have relevant characters like Shizuka and Leah and, yeah, technically Konami, mm -hmm. but it's not until 3 that the series properly starts, and if there was a game to be translated first, this would be the one, but at the same time, this wasn't, like exactly what people wanted people wanted to move forward in the series because sengoku rants up uh, not to give spoilers but it does have a bit of a cliffhanger ending kind of the biggest cliffhanger ending of in the series yeah I, except for except three i guess three also kind of has one but three has a bit of a yeah three has a cliffhanger in mm -hmm. 2013 this is what i like to call the golden age of uh alsoft translations because there were just there's shit being released seemingly monthly because they're just left and right r and r releases toshin toshi that is not a rants game but it takes place on the continent and rants does show up on tv <laughs> yeah and i am glad that it exists because they made it before rants 3 and i feel like in this game they um they didn't know how to do like random encounters yet mm -hmm. which helped them when making rants 3 because the encounter rates in, th in that game are in like you, you move like three steps and you have an encounter and yeah. it's an entire dungeon you're going through. This is also one of the more gameplay intensive games that were put out. Mm -hmm. So that was that's something that got people a bit more excited. Also, it was the arrival of this exciting new R and R person, and people were all like, "This mm -hmm. guy right here, he's gonna put the other translators to shame." After that, in the same, oh, only two days later, you got the release of Wide Wide Nyo, which was just a Basically a gotcha game featuring all your favorite Alisoft characters with a lot of focus on with quite a few characters from Sengoku Rants, which was new at the time. And this was great because a lot of people were like, oh, this I get to see more of Kenshin. This was a lot of people's first exposure to Rance's Kichikyo design, which doesn't quite look like how he looks. There, there are some distinct differences. <laughs> yeah. So that did get people a bit confused slash curious and it did bring to light the existence of Akichiko Rants. The next month we got the translation of Dungeons and Dolls which was another gameplay focused game just a big gold dungeon crawler with a doll wife that you can dress up. It wasn't anything too special but it was a nice distraction and something that you could get like if you're into item sorting Oh man, you're gonna like this. <laughs> you can sort all sorts of items. We had a gap of two months between that and the next translation, which was actually a double feature. The new translation team didn't want to translate Rants 1 and Rants 2 again, because they didn't really want us to suffer through playing an old adventure game. So instead we got the translation of the Digest edition of Rants 1 and Rants 2, which cuts out all that arcade gameplay and just gives it to you in the form of a kinetic novel which actually works out really nicely for those games i still recommend reading that version of rants 2 over actually playing the game yeah that's how i absorb that like information yeah, yeah if you like um like adventure kind of puzzle games um with like some bullshit combat um like you can play too um it's just even as far as even as far as old adventure games with bullshit combat goes, I wouldn't exactly recommend it. Yeah. Not long after the release of the Dual Digest games, we got another step forward in the series with the release of Rants 4, Legacy of the Sect. I love this game. It's it wasn't it didn't actually feel that connected to the rest of the series, but it's a very nice standalone story that a yeah, lot of people and... do like. And it does actually matter for a lot of later stuff. Like, it's, it's 
it's kind of one of the, the starting points for a couple plot points that they pursue later on. If you like uh, Rance War, uh, the game you're probably most looking forward to isn't Rance Quest or Rance 10. It's probably Rance 9. Yeah, because this is where we get the, really connected. Yeah, it's where we get the start of the patent faction arc, mm -hmm. more or less. After this, we got the release of Toshin Toshi 2 from Arunaru. And this is where Arunaru made one of the... Around this time, Arunaru made one of his boldest statements. Oh, yeah? At the time. And that was, fuck it, I'll translate Kishiko rants. I have zero faith in these other people. They're never going to give you anything. Oh. <laughs> so, that's where the, this, is, this is the beginning of the, beginning of the drama. Yeah. All right, so this, this is like, we're about at the end of the Golden Age. Now we're about to begin, like, the downfall. Mm -hmm. The last game released in 2013 was Kiru no Pianyon, which uh, I skipped out on this one. I have no idea what that even <laughs> I, is. I have not played this one. I believe it's it's tied in very closely to Widenyo, I believe. Kind of skipped out on it. I'm, I, I'm going to check that out at some point. But after that, the Golden Age seemed to come to an end. We got the really... 2014 gave us the release of Rants 4.1 and 4.2 within the first three months. Save the medicine plant. Save the medicine plant and Angel Army. First of all, they didn't run on modern computers. You had to set up a virtual machine. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit of a barrier to entry for some people. And even if it wasn't a barrier to entry, that's still like, I gotta open up my virtual machine. Extra steps will turn people off. Yeah, Not and they are, like, these two are just fun, cute little games um, that are, aren't very serious and are just kind of a... They're filler. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a fucking episode one and episode two. And it's a spinoff. But we did get the bombshell release in September of Hichikyo Rants, which was probably, was the game that a lot of people who were more invested in the retro releases, this is what they were looking forward to. Mm -hmm. If you were following the translation projects to this point, this was the game to to get. But it was coming from Arunaru, who had... We started to see some of his controversial decisions at this point. For the longest time, we had honorifics being thrown around, like it's a Persona game or something. And Arunaru had no patience for that kind of thing. So Ransama was no more... Now it was Master Rants. And yeah. that that was something that, like, in hindsight, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that translation decision. It, it goes into the, like, like direct translation versus a localization debate on, um, like, whether you should make something that someone who knows nothing about um, the the original language can get through, or if, like, um, or if you want something to be more, like, direct. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, we had the first big debate when he translated dark what has currently been known as dark lords into demons and this was a big fucking problem at the time yeah. <laughs> that that was crossing the line yeah that that and like the it was like the demon army versus the monster army just general minor changes that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way it was the new rants game that we want that a lot of people wanted but it wasn't using the words that people wanted to see it did there were some like minor debates but ultimately no one else really had the tools or know-how to make a patch to change those to the terms that they were used to because everyone's lazy also like those system games are just a lot harder to work oh, yeah. with than the newer ones yeah the... so this is what we had to work with and it was the last major release we got we closed out 2014 with the first release to be, like, credited to this Ludo Rathome person with Little Princess, which is a game that no one asked for. <laughs> I I went and got a walkthrough to play through it because it's a fucking text adventure. Ain't nobody got the time for that without a walkthrough. <laughs> there, there's only one reason to play it, and that's the payoff at the end. It's how you beat the final, uh, like final boss of sorts but here's the thing the game is so janky that you don't get the full payoff i played through it and when i got to the end and i typed in those those two beautiful legendary words <laughs> the text box is fucking auto scrolled and i couldn't 
like take I couldn't soak in the fact that I just talked pom pom. Oh really? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So it's I'm not sure if that's a issue with the translation or if or it's, that it came out in 1987. Yeah. And honestly, if that's an issue with the translation, and this is the one thing the guy has credited to him at this <laughs> point, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh 2015 was the start of the confusing times. Not the, the confusing time sounds like a fucking era of our human history. <laughs> like for real. It's like right after the right after the medieval period, we have the confusing times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In February, we got the translation of Mamatoto: A Record of War. Uh, this is actually a pretty solid game, and it is it's one of Alisoft's favorite games to bring back. Yeah. If you, if you ever play uh, Rant 9 and are, are going to it, be interested, check out this game. You'll see a lot of weird parallels that are uh, kind of interesting. Yeah. You'll also see a lot of, like, characters that would just become Rant's characters later on. Rick is in that. Patent's in it. Patent of the Elman Empire. Um, when I see when I see Elman, I think <laughs> that it's, like, with a Cockney accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this was the last fan translation that we got, which is a bit disappointing because we did see other fan translations talked about on the forums. There was the fan translation of Rant's Quest being headed by someone going by Aten Jinyu Gnu. Uh, They were apparently being paid in vodka, which is just a sign of good confidence in your translator. And there have been a couple other uh, projects too, like, um, this is later on, but Daitech Koku had a fan translation going on for a bit. Yeah, but and that that even released a demo, which I didn't include because it's incomplete. Yeah, it is like a third done. But at least they released a demo. Yeah, it it, it has the UI translated, so if you actually did want to try and play it with, like, Machine Translator or, like, a a text extractor, you can. Um, And at least, like, play the game of it but uh it's not it's it's not as good as die bond show it's not during this there was also the apparent translation from aristolis of rants 9 we didn't even see screenshots of that one we just saw percent signs and that was enough at the time <laughs> yeah is that also where we got the ui patch from or is that uh, no else? the ui patch was someone else oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> so this guy well, didn't even release the UI pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was gonna thank him, but never mind. And that leaves uh, the apparent translation of uh, Galzu Island, which is actually one of my favorite stories from this like period of lies and confusion. <laughs> the person promising us the translation of Galzu gave us a huge screenshots and a gameplay footage video. Uh, this channel is now gone. They also would regularly promise us something big on Christmas. And people were all like, "Ah, oh, shit, Christmas release. It's gonna be just like the release of Rants 3. <laughs> yes, good. Finally. So a lot of people were excited, looking forward to it. Christmas comes around, and a video was dropped on the guy's channel, which we later found out it was the girl's channel. Frenzu Town. It was a very dated joke about four kids translations which has aged even better today (laughs) that ends in a space jam mashup and a persona for the animation reference and this was the big surprise this was the big thing he was releasing a joke video and then when people were all like well that's that was cute was that it (laughs) like where's the thing (laughs) The translation translator called the people of the thread entitled and said ah. that they were a secret edgy rape club. <laughs> <laughs> and right? we we never heard from we haven't heard from him in a while. And then when we did hear from him, it felt like this bizarre divine justice was imposed. So Zamasu was doing the translation. Uh, no, no. Zamasu later uh, hired uh, they're hired Gaizu. Now, uh, Gaizu translate cuck porn. <laughs> okay. He translated the game, please bang my wife. Or bang my <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah, as you do. <laughs> and it, it just feels like some bizarre form of justice that after leading people on and just not releasing it, not delivering, what they 
end up having to work on is, is, is some fucking cuck porn. He has that on his, uh, he has, apparently has on, on her business card. And that, 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 that's, they're, they're a good sport about it. <laughs> at this point, in, uh, in July of that year, at Anime Expo, we got a very concerning announcement. Alisoft has partnered with Manga Gamer and will start to officially bring their games to the West under that publisher. Sounds great. The first game they're bringing over is not a ranch game. It's not a it's not a die game. It is Beat Blades Haruka, one of Alisoft's more uh, arrow focused games. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people weren't particularly excited about this title because no one asked for it and. Here it is. End up, we end up buying uh, Beat Blades Haruka a year later in 2016. At gunpoint. Buy Haruka. Buy Haruka. If you buy Haruka, you'll get Ranch games. Buy yeah, Haruka. That was that was the promise. You'll get games. Just buy Haruka, guys. We bought it because it was a sign of good faith, and we were told again and again, "You're going to love it." The game's very erotic, <laughs> and it's like that isn't what I came here for, but like. I am a straight male. I can get into erotic. <laughs> uh, Haruka sold. No one talked about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't actually hate the game. I I, I don't think it's bad. Um, but no one talks about it. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to talk about. There's no gameplay like of note to talk about. It's like super, super basic, basic stuff. Um, it just has a lot of CGs and a lot of porn. We also have our first sign of this isn't going to be entirely stable. As Harka, while it does release, is delayed for a week due to issues with the payment processor. Something that we're seeing echoes of today. Later that year, at Anime Expo, we see the announcement of Rants 5D and Rants 6. This, at least visually, is a lot closer to where we started. And a lot of people are looking forward to this title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when they announced they were going to bundle together too, that was also a nice part. Yeah, like, wow, not only are we getting, we aren't getting one Rance game, but we're getting two Rance games. And that was, like, we, we, we started high-fiving each other. Yeah. Maybe, like, one and a half, but y- you know what? We more didn't know one. that yet. We didn't yeah. know that yet. There are a few people who spoke Japanese or willing to play non-translated games who are all like, oh, no. <laughs> you aren't ready for Rance Roulette. Within the year... We get the release of Rants 5D, The Lonely Girl, and Rants 6, The Collapse of Zen. I downloaded it day one in the bundle. I unpacked Rants 5D and closed Rants 5D. <laughs> because I had How far did you get? I think I got to the second stage where I was like, I'm I'm not liking it's what so I'm seeing. It's so weird. Like, it's bizarre, the gameplay. It's, it's a roulette wheel sometimes, then it's a fucking adventure game. And I'm it's not... bizarre. It is... A gameplay. You know, I have actually gone to appreciate it a little bit more recently, um, mm-hmm. as I went back to it and actually beat it. Mm-hmm. But it's still a weird game, and if it was any longer, it'd be unplayable. <laughs> but then but we, get, we got the release of Rant Six as well, and that yeah, game and... was exceptional. Yeah. But there were some exceptions to this exceptionality, and that was the new, the new age of name problems. Yep. So. We went from Dark Lord to Demon, and people were all like, that's weird, but, you know, it took some getting used to. And if you think about it, the original Takachu in translation did use Demon. So, yeah, that's that's fine, fine. Yeah, Demon, Demon. Red 6 releases, Fiend. Fiend. The, some of the 24 <laughs> most powerful people in the world capable of, uh, you know, killing hundreds of humans. They're fiends. And the Demon King was translated as Archfiend. And the, remember those jokes earlier from uh, the when, when I mentioned uh, when Gaizu released that tasteless video that made four kids jokes? That was starting to come true because a lot of people compared this change in localization to what four kids did with Yu-Gi-Oh. People looked at the Demon, the Demon King into Archfiend translation and compared it to the Archfiend archetype. Okay, I, I, I'm I'm one of Rada's patrons. I, I'm, I'm gonna ask for that archetype archive. <laughs> and that joke was pretty spot on because in the original Japanese, Archfiend was demon. <laughs> so this translate this translation change rubbed 
everyone the wrong way. Within 24 hours, because the tools were more known for this game, there was a patch to fix this. Additionally, people noticed that there were a few things notably absent from the English release of Ranch 6. Those being the original Alice Mansion and the bonus playable character Takagasatsu. It turns out, in order to get Takagasatsu, all you had to do was insert her graphics back into the game, and a patch was made to add her back in, but uh, the original version of that patch did a horrible job importing her sprites, and they had this weird JPEG compression to them. I made, I released an updated version that would clean that up, make it look nice, as well as a patch later on to just play as the uh, temporary party members in the post game, just, just for fun. These were some weird omissions, and uh, we still haven't received translations for the original Alice Mansion events. Sad. I love the Alice Mansion. But it was a big release, and Rant 6 is a lot of people's favorite game in the series. Partially because it's one of the two modern Rants games. Especially have. people that aren't into uh, more strategy, like Conquest games. Yeah. Um, Rant 6 is a like, go-to RPG. And a lot of people... Or at least the people who were telling me that you're going to love Rant 6 tell me it's a better RPG than Rant's Quest. Yeah, I can't, I've... I can't verify that. It's different, I'll say that. 2017. This was a year where there was no releases. At least no, nothing official. In July, we got the announcements for Eventical, Sengoku Rants, and Rant's Quest Magnum. And it was a surreal day for me, five years after I played the... Five years after I played the fan translation to see, mm -hmm. oh man, Sengoku Rants is going to be translated. And then you look at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Stare. Yeah, this was around when I kind of jumped back on the ship too, like just, just before these announcements. Um, interesting to see a game that, yeah, I played nearly five years ago. Announced to be translated again. But we also received the announcement of Rants Quest Magnum, which is yeah. what a lot of people have been looking forward to because the first sign of stepping forward. Yeah, because this is the sequel to the game, the first game that was translated. I'm willing to bet in the universe where Rant 6 was arbitrarily translated first, you'd be just as excited to see Sengoku. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it it's getting a sequel to the story. Yeah. People were excited to finally move forward. And especially after, like, going through and playing all the earlier games, like, they may not have excellent gameplay, but they, they do have good story and writing. Mm -hmm. um, which makes you want to continue along with it. Uh, this is not part of the translation project, but this was basically how people uh, survived in this in this dark age of progress. In April of 2017, uh, we got the first version of the Darkness Hero Rants mod, which was a remake of Kichikyo Rants in Sengoku Rants' engine. It was a return to where we all started, but also something new and exciting. And it was also something that was us first. I remember uh, uh, people would post screenshots of Darkness Hero on 2chan, and people would be all like, what is this Photoshop? Ooh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of honor. Yeah. When the 2chaners are like, this is fake. Yeah, like this was, this is our thing. Uh, Topu Guy promised us a version with the story mode of Kichigo Rants, but uh, ultimately decided to change focus entirely from a remake of Kishika Rants to a Rants multiplayer experience, which you received a year later on June 12, 2018. The hype for Rants multiplayer was admittedly cut a bit short by the release of Eventical. This was a divisive game for a lot of people. On one hand, we were getting a modern Owlsoft game for the first time. For, forget, like, getting Rants Quest, which at this point is, like, fucking 10 years old. Mm -hmm. This is a... something that came out, like, just, like, a year or two back. This shows that, like, even if the game's new, it doesn't mean that we're going to be waiting forever. Plus, it was a decent... it was a pretty good length. Uh, just a few months later, we got the Steam release of Eventical, which came out of nowhere and confused everyone. Yeah. Because it seemed like an actual dream <laughs> to see an Alsoft title up there on the Steam new releases page. Especially around this time, gotta keep in mind, Steam was pulling games and then putting them back up and pulling them left and right. 
uh, with like no real rhyme or reason. And or, I mean, they're even doing that today. But this is this is especially when they started doing that. There were also rumors that, you know, if you if you buy this, maybe we'll see some other games pop up. So I bought it, and there was a Steam DB link that did show. Yes, other games were showing up. If you look, there's a Steam DB page for Rants 5 and 6 as a bundle, but it was unfortunately pulled before it could even live because of a little controversial game that was on Steam. Additionally, at Anime Expo that year, uh, we got the announcement of Rants 9 and Rants 10, as well I'm as- I'm very excited for Rants 10. Everyone, everyone loved that. <laughs> Except for the people who were all like, well, we haven't gotten the last two you announced. Yeah. And a month later, we got the announcement of Beat Angel Escalator, which was the sequel to Haruka, which we, sh we were supposed to buy. But now there are other things to buy. <laughs> and then we have 2019, the, cur the current year as of recording this. At Anime Expo, we got the announcement of Rants 02 and Rants 01, which are nice. The, it's it's the Origins bundle, which is nice because I wouldn't pay full price for Rants 02. <laughs> <laughs> It is notably Rents, uh, Rents 2 Kai, which has some changes that I don't know about. The ones that were translated. What? Wait, what? Yeah. Rents 2 Kai? Yeah. This one... Cuts out all the filler, dude. It, it, but listen, saying, right? listen, if you, listen, if you aren't going to watch the Garlic Jr. Saga, why are you even playing Rents 2? <laughs> uh. On September 12th, we were supposed to receive the release of Sin Goku Rants. That has currently been delayed due to payment processing issues, but this isn't it. If you've been keeping up with things and you bought Haruka, this isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> the Rance translation story is one filled with a lot of weird deceit and <laughs> dis lies, betrayal, and distrust and despair. <laughs> Tr truly, truly a comedy worthy of Ludo Ratha himself. <laughs> as, as for the, uh, Apparent translators prior to this. Uh, Ludo Rathom was the one who basically started all these projects, but ultimately only ever delivered on translating setting information, which were which was very appreciated at the time. I, I'm I'm all for the jokes of joking and memeing on Ludo, but he was the one who managed to spread information about the series and drum up hype better than anyone else could. Uh, yeah. The now defunct site Ludo's Hut had information on each of the nations and its key characters and it, even if you couldn't play those games just looking at those pages and just thinking i really want to see these characters interact that was something that's something to get excited over and he did ultimately release little princess and for some reason steins gate which i believe we were also told to buy <laughs> i remember being told to buy steins gate before being told to buy Haruka, and that was the most surreal thing ever. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's... Hmm. That was, like, it was just a trust me moment of buying Steinsgate. I didn't do it because it seemed really out of nowhere, but I believe that it's ultimately what got their foot through the door to propose to Manga Gamer. Tulip Goddess Maria, who headed a lot of the more well-received fan translations is currently working with Monkey Gamer. Uh, she is the one behind the translation for Rants 01 and Rants 02. Yeah. And Quest. Oh, she's behind Quest as well? Yeah. Huh. Or now I did 7, 9, and 10. That's doing. He's doing... He's doing 10? Yeah, he's already like 25% through it. Arunar, Arunaru, who uh, was, the, was the controversial rebel of the Rants translators. Yeah. The Ultim Sasuke of the group. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the Sasuke of Rants Translators. He ultimately had the biggest impact, being the one to release uh, Rant 6, 7, and Kishiko, as well as dropping Toshin Toshi and Toshin Toshi too. He was... He's made some contentious decisions, but damn it, he gets some results. Yeah, he, he is a fast translator. And damn it, I hate Fiend and Arch Fiend. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's slowly becoming neutral to me. I've I've just I, no matter how much I see that, I'm not going. To, I don't think I'm ever going to say naturally Archfiend Rance or Archfiend Geel. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be Demon King to me because that just rolls off the tongue so much more naturally. It does, even if it's got that kind of lost in translation thing where when you're saying like Demon King Miki. Yeah. 
I, I still like it. it. Yeah. It sounds more natural and sounds more end bossy than the Arch Fiend. Yeah. When I, when I, when I hear Arch Fiend, I think I'm a rolling dice. The Arch Fiend is the boss of level two. Yeah. Like, not the. <laughs> it was it was never like the perfect translation project, but we got a lot of things before they went canon and mainstream. Though I, I do have a bit of a conspiracy theory here. Oh. Tell me more, Rich Evans. Okay, so as 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 I said before, there were supposed translation projects for Rain's Quest, Rain's Nine, and Galaxy Island. Right? These translators were painted were posting with such utter incompetency, met with hard drive failure after hard drive failure, and general like laziness and sloth. Uh, the one translating Rain's Quest, Atten Jnu, was described as being paid with alcohol and just gave this CD vibe. This this isn't to say that uh, I doubt what they were doing or if they were real people, but part of me believes that these were fake people made up by the actual translators to make people trust fan translations less mm. so that when they went mainstream, no one, people would be more up for the increased standard and like the fact that jobs actually depended on this around what year were those translations happening like before the manga gamer stuff yeah it was okay these yeah, were happening before. these were happening in like from generally from late 2013 to 2014 hmm. and uh bluto early on the reason why we started to get translations of earlier games in the series instead of forward was because uh he would always say this element this element in this game is actually a callback to this game but this game is just as good and they, they would just keep on backpedaling until we were eventually at rants three <laughs> it was a master level keikaku but like ultimately i gotta respect the results and i don't think i'd be nearly as invested in the series if these games just released normally <laughs> The, li the lies gave me hope, in a way. <laughs> yeah, it toughens up your soul, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you can't just have everything handed to you. You gotta, you gotta fucking feel miserable sometimes. Mm -hmm. You gotta live through the, the lies and conspiracies. Mm -hmm. The distrust. And ultimately, you, you'll, you'll end up feeling more rewarded for it. It builds character. I don't think we're ever going to get another year for translations like 2013. I doubt that... No. I That's... doubt that... It, it would require like more fan translators to jump on boat, and their fan translations are pretty much dead now for Prilosoft games. Yeah, and fan translations are hard in general. A lot of people like look at the the good fan translations, like the uh, Ace, the Ace Attorney fan translations and the Mother Three fan translation, as yeah, why why don't they just translate like this, where mm -hmm. it's an actual perfect translation that manages to localize things just enough to keep to feel just as charming as if it released for reals. But a lot of fan translations are, are like the Alisoft fan translations. They're like the Shin Mikami Tensei If fan translations, where things are being hidden, and there's a lot of like general lack of progress in communication. It's a, it's a hard thing to go through. If it does happen, like that's great, but ultimately there's no one you can trust better to get you the game than learning the language yourself but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think we're gonna come up with some kind of like lesson like no work hard no okay. no no don't no don't. work hard don't wait for other people to do things for you seize your own destiny no don't but no no, fuck, no just no, fuck. no just no just wait no fuck that like <laughs> don't don't learn a language that's only spoken in one country so you can that's about it. to be fu that's gonna die in a hundred years <laughs> Because Shinzo Abe can't get his shit together. No, no, wait for wait for people to translate it. Make make money and then hire someone else to do it for you. <laughs> it's been a it's been a ride being a part of this fan base. Though. I've been able to convert a few people on the way, but no one's not many people have actually felt the struggle. <laughs> well, I could share a bit of that struggle today. <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting struggle. I always like looking back at this sort of like not written history, you know? It's just like spoken of in myth and legends. Like nobody's going to be writing a fucking book about the this, the Rance series translation problems. Mm -hmm. no, you you got to dig through archives to find this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That that book would be called like Finding Ludo or something. <laughs> <laughs>